G'day folks, and welcome to the introduction for scenario A3, Torah, Torah, Torah. This is the third and final learning scenario in Axis Empire's Die Senso. This takes place from November, December 1941 through to April, May 1942. And this is exciting because this is the, I guess, period of the Pacific Theatre of Operations that I actually know about. And in fact, I, um, I give lectures on... Australia's involvement in the war. Um, I've written a paper on, just one paper, on uh, military labour during the uh, Kokoda campaign in 1942, and I've taught a lot about the home front during the, the Second World War. Um, I won't go into that, but this is the period that I talk about, and um, this is how it's set up in Axis Empire's Die Senso. There is still a lot going on up in China where we have all these China minor countries activated. Something to point out up here is that Hopei is an Axis country working with the, the Japanese in this area. Again, it's basically Sichuan in kind of yellow up here, Yunnan in white, and Kiangsu in blue down the coast. Um, the Japanese, of course, have also taken over Indochina from the French at ceded territory. Uh, they are about to begin their Malaya campaign, where historically they swept down here in a matter of weeks and then um, captured Singapore in February 1942, simultaneously sweeping throughout oh, the rest of the southwest Pacific. And, of course, not to forget those strikes on... Um, of course, Pearl Harbor and elsewhere in the Pacific. So this um, this scenario is well, whilst continuing that campaign in China, which will be fairly easy for me to manage, I think now introduces what well, more um, utilizes more of the support rules for naval units. There are a lot of uh, surface fleets, CD fleets, troop convoys, these scratch troop convoys. Um, there's a combination of US and British slash allied uh, naval support units. And the um, some of the core rules that we're utilising here revolve around that support placement, in particular the, um, the on-station boxes. And for the first time, the contestation of those support unit placements. So I've done, a, I've done a quick read through of the section on support unit placement and contesting support units. Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest, I don't understand the full implications of this yet. Um, I understand basically when the, for example, when the Axis players place a, uh, a support unit, this can be um, contested by the the non-phasing player they can take basically one of their an appropriate support unit um, declare that they're contesting placement and they place this if it's an air unit it just goes in the delay box if it's a naval unit uh, such as a surface unit or a cv fleet they go in the naval warfare delay box and again my understanding is that this this involves longer delays compared to the the regular delay box um, the basically to run you through the the victory conditions, the the Japanese um, really have the initiative, and they're the ones needing to um, advance. They start with the victory point track. I'm just going to double check this on. Make sure I put it in the right place. I think it's on one. The Japanese victory point track, yeah, it's on one rising sun. They need to end the scenario on two victory points or higher and have control of two of the following locations. Uh, Port Moresby, Singapore, I have just pointed those out earlier, uh, Wake Island, um, way over here, yep, there it is, or... The one that I don't know, Quailin. Now, I don't know where Quailin is, so I need to find that and figure that out. But that's something that, uh, that's, that's the fourth potential one as well. Um, and basically the, 
the Western faction wins if the Axis faction can't achieve both of those goals. There are a lot of units in the force pool. Um, this is only, of course, a four-turn scenario. Um, so fewer turns in that um, A2 scenario, but of course there's much more going on. Um, a lot of activity, and as I said, a lot of um, naval support activity throughout the, uh, the Pacific. So a lot, of, a lot more reinforcements coming on. Sorry, replacements. Potential replacement, replacements, I should, should say. Um, the Western forces have a combination of US, um, British slash Commonwealth, Indian, Australian troops, um, Sichuan, Yunnan, uh, Kiangsu troops. Um, I mentioned all these fleets that they have. A lot of them are... Um, you can see, well, they have they have a supply convoy here. I was going to say that there's a lot on the board, but there's not really. Um, I was placing a lot out, but it's really a lot of their detachments spread around the area. Um, so what I'm going to do next is just spend some time <laughs> rereading those um, contesting rules, rereading the the whole idea of um, on station and. Uh, convoy routes and the implications of that um, rereading about detachment markers um, and this is brought open this is the problem that i often have with well, i haven't played many pacific theater operation games but where do you go it's the problem i have with empire of the sun when i tried to play that about a decade ago um, read through the rules had it set up and i was like okay where, where do i start um, so many different paths for the Axis player. Um, Port Moresby, Wake, Singapore should be their three objectives, so let's focus on those. I think as the Axis, um, the Malay campaign out on the left here has to be something they're striving for. And then they've really got a choice of uh, Kualin, Port Moresby, Wake Island. Um, Port Moresby is always risky because there's Australians down there. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's just it's a long supply line, and historically that was the problem. You got Guadalcanal um, right next door, and these two. I mean, historically, the Japanese were strained for supplies to support both offensives, and they prioritised Guadalcanal at the expense of their New Guinea campaign across Port Moresby. Uh, incidentally, for any Australians, this is where Milne Bay is, right down the coast here. It's a first. Um, First, uh, what would we call it, a repulse of an attempted Japanese offensive. The Japanese landed and they were defeated by Australians. Uh, and I think some US air personnel, uh, air force service personnel uh, at the airfield that, were, um, that was in place in Milne Bay. Here it's Gilly Gilly, uh, which is on the north coast. Um, and the Japanese were forced to re-embark and, and leave and give up their plans uh what else do we need to consider um not really the philippines um it's not a priority um china of course now the chinese forces don't have much of an offensive capability but they do have i'll call it a sound defensive capability uh, there's a few cities and rivers in that area. Um, so if they can defend well, they can really slow the Japanese down in that area. Again, only four turns for the Japanese to do anything. Um, what else to consider? We do have two option cards per side. The Japanese have East Wind Rain. I'll get to that during the playthrough. Um, the Allies start with Pacific the Westerns. Pat Force starts with Pacific mobilization. Uh, there's also Western aid to China. That's over in the, just off to the left here. You can see all those uh, reinforcements for potential replacements and surface fleets and so forth. This is the Western aid for China here. Um, a huge force pool of various ground forces. Uh, we've got some Commonwealth forces in India as well, mainly garrison forces. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So just a, another quick refresher of the 
rules. And I'll point out just as well, way out, you've got... Um, So sort of detachments, US detachments all the way up here, um, Honolulu, um, detachments in Wake Island and elsewhere throughout Midway and so forth. Um, so there's a scattering of forces all over the place um, and a lot that can potentially happen. So yeah, with that, uh, with that done, I'll get started and uh, run you through some of those additional rules as, uh, as I play them out.